Well, two weeks ago on this show, Labor leader Anthony Albanese told me no matter what, he would never approve the mining of uranium in Australia to provide clean energy. But the federal government's net zero plan provides for at least an assessment of the latest nuclear technology about to be trialled in several other countries. In fact, the push to adopt pop-up small modular nuclear reactors, SMRs, is about to go into overdrive. Aircraft engine manufacturer and automobile giant Rolls-Royce has gained the support of the British government to build a fleet of mini reactors that Prime Minister Boris Johnson says will help meet his nation's net zero target by 2035. Unlike Australian politicians, the British and the Europeans are not afraid of nuclear power, which already supplies 70% of France's energy needs and 31% of baseload power in the UK. To discuss this new, safer and more affordable energy frontier, I caught up with the CEO of Rolls-Royce SMR, Tom Sampson, earlier. Tell us what's compelled Rolls-Royce to go down the small modular nuclear reactor path. Well, we began this as a program at Rolls-Royce back in 2016. Uh, we already had uh, a long experience of uh, designing and building reactors for our uh, naval submarine program. Uh, and we wanted to try and bring a, a new UK technology to market that was really designed specifically to address the market needs. Uh, we've seen the challenges with large nuclear uh, in the UK and elsewhere, and we wanted to design a product that was really trying to address four key criteria. Low cost, deliverable, global and scalable, and importantly, investable. And we felt that with those attributes, <clears throat> we could create a product that would then address the unprecedented levels of demand for clean energy with our nuclear SMR solution. OK, what makes this technology safer and more stable than large reactors from last century? Well, we've built in the latest innovations. We're a so-called Generation 3 Plus design. So we've built in all the, the learnings and lessons from, from previous uh, experiences in the industry. So we've got all the latest passive safety features into our design. Uh, those passive safety, safety features and ensure our reactor is kind of what we call walk away safe, it doesn't require any human interaction for a number of days following an incident. Uh, but also we're taking this design through the UK regulatory process with the Office for Nuclear Regulation. And the UK regulator is recognized as having one of the world's highest standards uh, of nuclear safety in its process. And we are fully embarking and fully committed to that uh, regulatory process here in the UK. And when we complete that in the next few years, our design will be be certified by the UK and we hope that will help us then take this product globally. What purposes can SMRs be best used for, do you think? Well, our plant is about 470 megawatts, so it's quite a big SMR, probably the largest SMR that's out there. And we've come up with that size because that allows us to do everything we need to do in a factory. So that's what's radically different with this technology. It's a factory built solution that radically it removes construction risk from the delivery of a nuclear power plant. We also build a site factory at the very beginning of the projects and so the work on site is also done under factory conditions. So we're about 470 megawatts, we're a very low cost competitive solution. So as well as traditional grid connected electricity, we also have a, a range of uh, options to create off grid solutions to power data centers, to power hydrogen production facilities to produce clean hydrogen uh, to produce synthetic aviation fuel, to produce desalination uh, water, to produce industrial heat. And so those off-grid applications can help decarbonize the harder to get to sectors such as transport and heat by combining those solutions with our base load constantly always on SMR technology. And so do you see these reactors as an affordable source of power? Absolutely. So here in the UK, uh, for example, we expect to bring this to market at around £60 per megawatt hour, which is comparable with, uh, I mean, offshore wind started off at about 120. It's now down somewhere between 40 and 50. But importantly, that's an intermittent source of energy. Our price is for a base load firm, always on source of clean energy. And we think when you compare our £60 a megawatt hour with other forms of renewable energy, 
that are also then adapted to become firm by applying battery storage or other solutions, then our cost competitive is really quite, quite compelling. Of course, there's no reason why these reactors couldn't replace coal-fired power stations on site because they have all the grid infrastructure and connections already. Absolutely. That's one of our, our key targets is to implement these SMRs on existing decommissioned uh, coal power plants where there's already a grid connection and a cooling water infrastructure that we can slot into with our SMR technology uh, to provide a new form of clean, uh, low-cost energy for the future. And so that is a really compelling uh, uh, entry point for us is to come into those existing decommissioned coal plants or to replace coal plants with a clean source. And at 470 megawatts, we're very consistent size to how many of the coal plants have been built uh, over the last uh, 20, 30 years. So it's a very compatible configuration. In an Australian context, our remoteness, geography, natural resources would fit this technology perfectly, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think, I think in any, any country where there's a higher dependency on renewables, you need a form of base load always on clean energy to provide that base load firm generation. Um, and, and if Australia are committed to higher levels of renewables, they're going to need something when coal goes away to replace that base load and gas goes away. Carbon capture and storage is another option. However, the effectiveness of carbon capture and storage, when you consider the methane production in the process and how effective the capture and the storage is in terms of capturing CO2, uh, it's not necessarily as effective as 100% clean energy solutions such as nuclear. And a country like Australia is perfectly placed. You've got the, you've got the natural uh, uranium uh, in country. Uh, you've got the skill set to be able to operate and, and maintain these type of assets. And also with the emergent AUKUS uh, submarine program, uh, it would be a natural consideration to consider how you could then evolve into a commercial nuclear uh, regime within Australia as well on the back of that decision that's already been taken. Where will the world be, say, this time next year and the following year as far as using SMRs for power is concerned? Well, the first goal we've got is to, is to get orders to deploy the technology in, in the UK and then outside the UK on the back of that UK deployment. We've now got the funds to take the technology into the generic design assessment with our regulator. Our next goal is to sign up uh, orders with, with customers. We're bringing in private capital to finance this technology uh, in the UK and then hopefully have the first unit uh, on the grid here in the UK by 2031. But with the factory footprint, we can then produce two units a year every year thereafter. And by being a scalable product, as demand increases, we can build more factories. It is such an exciting new frontier, though, isn't it? It really is. And, and if, we need, if we're going to get to net zero, Chris, we need nuclear. There's no other way to get there. And we're really keen to be bringing this technology to market now, to be part of that solution. I wish you all the best and hope we can talk about getting this technology to Australia soon. Tom Sampson, CEO of Rolls-Royce SMR, thank you for your time. Thank you, Chris. Look forward to meeting you soon.